Good afternoon and welcome to the Middle East Forum's weekly podcast series. I'm Stacey Roman and I will be moderating this discussion today. We're pleased to have Hanan Friedman, founder of TruckNet Enterprises, uh, who is actively involved in the Prime Minister's Office Fuel, Substitutes and Smart Transportation Development Program, join us to discuss Houthi Missiles in the Red Sea, the Land Solution. Mr. Friedman will speak for 15 minutes, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A from the audience. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I'll, I will turn the discussion over to Mr. Hanan Friedman. Good afternoon. Uh, first, I want to tell you thank you that you give me the stage to speak. We start to speak first about uh, TruckNet. TruckNet is a startup that coming from Israel in the city Elat. We have office in Elat, in Tel Aviv, in France and Romania. We have technology of smart transportation. If we look about the industry of logistics and trans transportation, we can see that 30% of the traffic of the heavy vehicle in the road empty. It means that that industry is an efficiency and uh, not sustainable. And we create a platform that can make a smart matching between empty truck to available cargo. How it's working. Let's say the truck going from Paris uh, to Lyon, and then we leave there the cargo, and then she go to the port of Marseille empty. And then from Marseille, from the port of Marseille, we take a cargo to Spain. We have part of the way that empty. This is the place the truck net go inside, found the empty mile, found the cargo and make the smart matching. You know, when I was in the COP27 uh, in Madrid, one of the journalists, after I speak, she uh, uh, stand and say, oh, it's very easy. You are the Tinder of the logistica industry. On the beginning, when I hear Tinder, I say, oh, well, one second, I feel not comfortable. But when I look from the young generation, how they see the full picture, yes, this is the Tinder of the logistica industry because the Tinder is a very uh, huge match system. And we are create the matching on our industry. If we look about this industry, it's not only about 30% of the truck empty. 37 gigaton of GAG emission come from the industry of the logistics and transportation, from that industry. It means that we need to find a way to reduce the emission and to create efficiency. The only way to make it is to fill the empty mile that we have on the road. The way that we work is very easy. Today, the company work in very traditional way. We, they work in a way that we call in-house fleet optimization. Every corporation manage his fleet in-house. The way the truck net work, we are create a sharing economy model data. It means that we connect to, in Europe today, to half million truck, it's thousands of company. We collect the data from everyone of the empty mile, we collect the data that coming from the factory of to the cargo, and then we create what we say fleet float. We create a fleet that coming from different company and we create a new optimization. And like that, we can reduce the empty mile, reduce the GAG emission, and we can create a new efficiency. This is the way that uh, truck network today. 
I am part of the ITF, the International Transport Forum of the OCD. I am part of the board member CPB. Uh, and one of the things that we do, we try to found with 65 uh, ministers of transportation from all over the world, a new technology, a, a new way to that industry. I know that part of us say, okay, let's say that it's going to be electric truck on the way. But let's say the truth for that moment, for the heavy vehicle, the technology is not yet here. We have we have problem with the charge that take time. We have problem with the uh, uh, with the heavy vehicle that is not enough power in the uh, in the electric to push the first moment in the truck. I say yes, the technology is going to be there if we're going to wait, and it's going to come. But until we found the way, we need to create a stepping stone on the way to the efficiency and try to optimize today the best that we can do. For sure, with the time, the technology is going to come and match us. In the way that we create our platform, we are believed that the way that we work with the sharing economy model, model data to, to optimize the fleet is going to be the next generation to the autonomy truck. Why? Because the autonomy truck is going to need a platform or system that can take the data that's coming from a lot of company and to create a new optimization, but uh, not, with, uh, not with human being. It's like it's going to be a platform that's going to manage the autonomy truck. And it's very interesting because in the last months, we are, we are working today in uh, Europe and we are working in Israel and we work in the UAE. What's happening in the last months with the situation in the Middle East, the situation in Babel Mand with the Hut and what's happening with the channel of Suez, we understand that uh, our uh, platform can give a service in the uh, land bridge between to the west to the east from the ground. Because we see that the Houthis, uh, uh, what they do, they stop the way of the ship and 30% of the ship that going all over the world, going from Suez, and the world needs it, need a solution today. And we uh, manage and we take care that our service that we give in the UAE going to give solution to the country in both of the side, in one side in Europe and one side in in uh, the area of China to find a way to move the cargo in another alternative. And what we do, we match our platform to the company to found a solution to the cargo and how it's work today. Let's say the chip that coming from China uh, uh, to uh, Europe, you have, we have two ways. They can go in one way that it's take today something like 45, 50 days. And they have another way from the land bridge that it can take something like a 25 days. How we do that? The ship that going for coming from China, coming to Jabal Ali, Jabal Ali is in Dubai. Then we take the cargo with truck. We going from Dubai to Saudi Jordan, from Jordan to Port Haifa, and going to Europe. And then to Europe, it's take from Haifa something like a, a 10 day. This is the perfect way to manage a new line express between to the east to the west, 
that it can be short. And we believe that for the future, this line express can give a service to everyone that need a fast way to move the cargo. We don't believe that all the 30% that go from the S to the West going to be in our uh, express line. But we believe that the company that need a fast service can use our uh, express line. Uh, Churchill say that uh, it's going to be a waste to uh, uh, drop to the garbage a good crisis. And we try to take uh, this crisis and to try to create a, a new success or a new efficiency because that. And I believe that uh, in what I see for this moment, that uh, it's going and going well. That's what I want to tell you about TruckNet. And I, I'd be happy if someone has some question to answer. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So the first question really is, um, how great is the potential of this land bridge? Can it actually take over the cargo through the Red Sea to avoid that security concern? Okay. Let's let's speak about security. We are, You have to understand that if we speak about the Middle East, sorry to say that like that, but the Middle East is like Carnaval about security. Every time we have something new that's happening, and uh, we need to take care that it's going to be some alternative, okay? No one's sure about 100% that everything is going to be 100% in that alternative. But if you look about the situation, even about the footing, if I ask you 120 days ago, even 19 days ago, who is the Hutim? I don't believe that you can tell me who is the Hutim because you don't know. And it's normal because most of the people in the world don't know who is the Hutim. It's some, uh, uh, some terror, uh, small terror that uh, proxy of big corporation, the head of the snake. We don't know about them. And they jump in one second. I believe that maybe it's going to be another security issue in different way. But if you have some alternative all the time to manage the situation, it's good. For this moment, I can tell you for sure, it's work and everything is good. But in, in the Middle East, no one can tell you that everything can be good all the time. You know, even before the 7th of October, the bad day that was, we don't think that something can be like that. We don't think that people can be bad like that. Before that, uh, uh, the, the, uh, if you look about Dash, if you look about, no one know that in the beginning that, that this is what gonna be. If you look about September 11, someone think that something can happening like that. We understand that we are live in a world that the security issue is a problem that we need to manage that. You know, I come from Israel. Israel, we born to that situation. We live it all the life. And we understand from the moment that we are young, the first song that we learn in, this, in the garden is uh, in Hebrew, we say it's a venu, a venu shalom aleichem. We bring peace on you. We, from one side, fight for the peace, but from the other side, we fight with the terror. And we have to understand that this is something that's going all the way together. And even in the logistical industry, you have to learn that you have to create different alternatives to different situations and never say never. All the time you have to be open, you have to, to keep of full security, full visibility, full sustainable, and take care and manage the situation in online time to change different way and try to keep safe all the time. 
Thank you so much. So if land-based commerce along the India, Middle East, Europe uh, economic corridor becomes more readily used in place of maritime transit, is it likely that those land routes could possibly become the targets of terrorists in hostile states? Yeah, I think I think first uh, in our uh, branch reach, uh, you have to know that we save uh, two weeks of transit time, and it's very important these two weeks. And and sorry about you because you make your question in two ways. You speak the first about the time. I understand correct. No, oh, nothing about the time, just uh, if it becomes more readily used. Yeah, I believe with the time it's going to be uh, used. Uh, you know, when you when you send a letter in the post, you have three ways. You can send it in the regular, that the cost is very low. You can send the letter in express that is going on the half of the time. And you can send it with an airplane that is going to be from today to tomorrow. It means that the three part you need all the time. Now we open, what we do now, we open the, the second level of the line express. And I think it's gonna be used for all the time. Thank you so much. Uh, Lise Corson asks, uh, the question about the capacity for the truck net model, what percentage of world trade that goes through Babel Mandeb can truck net carry? Should other governments pick up the slack uh, because Israel should cover its needs first and Houthis are affecting 95% of Israel's trade? Yes, okay. First, the capacity, if we look about the construction in the bridge, it's only 350 trucks every day. Let's say that the government makes some solution, it's gonna be 700. And then the, we open the hour of the bridge and it's going to be 1000 okay for sure it's not going to be all the capacity that going from suez and we don't we understand that the economy of egypt is part of suez no one wants to fight with that and it's okay but we want to give the option to i don't know 0 0.3 from the delivery that want to use the express line gonna have the option it's not mean that all the capacity, all the 30% of the traffic that going from Suez is going to come from Israel. We are, with the, we are with the leg on the land, you know, we understand the situation. I think that it's important that this option on the table for the express line, for sure we understand that cannot be possible that 100% from the capacity uh, uh, of the of sweat's gonna come from our land and second uh, what one of the things that we do in the optimization we are connect the train it means that we're not going on the road of the israel it's going to be uh, uh, on the train between a uh, bridge hussein direct to the port haifa Thank you. On that note, Steve Holstein asks, uh, how do you get permission to cross uh, Saudi Arabia and Jordan? Okay. First, uh, our great leader from USA, from Israel, from uh, UAE, signed off Ibrahim Agreement. An Ibrahim Agreement, according of Ibrahim Agreement, it means that this is a new Middle East and the option to move goods from, uh, from side to side, it's possible. Uh, I have to say that most of the goods is not coming, it's not going to Israel, it's going to Europe. It means that Israel is only a, a, a point on, of the map that open the door to the, uh, uh, to the port of Haifa and then going to Europe. And then from the other side is the same. From the port of Haifa, it's going to uh, China or, or Dubai. We are just point on, on the map. I hope, I hope that in the future, when Ibrahim Agreement go to the second level and it's gonna be a train that makes the service and, and, and my, my dream that the Middle East 
is going to be like Europe, you know, that you go from country to country and everything is open. And we hope so that this is the way. But I think that we are the first step to start, to start, to make, sorry to say, I come from startup world, to make the kickstart of the situation. And, I, and I'm very happy that the business is the lead of the situation. You have to see that the politica is not on the game. The country is not on the game. The situation of the breed of the bridge land coming from the business is not coming from the country. Ibrahim agreement is something that the our uh, uh, great leaders signed from all the side, but I take the politica to the side and and we the lead of all this situation is the business. And I speak about business from Europe, from China, from Korea, from Dubai, from Israel, from Jordan, from even from Egypt. You know, part of the bridge, I give today a service to company from Egypt. It's not only about Israel. Is is I think it's 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 big of us. Absolutely. On that note, uh, Amin asks, do you think that the Abraham Accords countries such as Morocco and the UAE can create a new commercial route? Uh, let's say that first I hope so. I hope so that we connect most of them. And I think that I hope that in, in one day, uh, uh, the story of, of the Houthi finish from one side and the Hezbollah finish from the other side, and we don't have terror and, and we can connect Lebanon inside and Syria and everybody because this is the dream. I don't know because I have children and in the end of the day, I'm going to have a green children. And I think that everyone that live in the Middle East have a dream that in the end of the day, all the story of the terror is going to finish and we can open all the land this is the new middle this is this is the vision of the new middle east because we have a great area that i'm sorry to say that all the time we are take care of the shit and we don't take the good that we have in that area just to connecting everybody to create sustainable to everyone it's good to the health it's good to the economy it's good for everyone and I hope, I hope God that give us this quiet. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, J.R. Pride asks, is there an estimate concerning the cost of shipping uh, via truck routes, the land route, compared to the current shipping cost via the sea? First, it's a very good question. I can tell you that uh, today, because the situation with the food team, the price is the same because we see that all the ship company take the price up. Today is the price of the same. But let's say the two, the situation is not stay. I believe that the solution is on the way. It's going to take a couple of months after that when all the road uh, sustainable and, and then it's going to go. The land bridge, because it's express line and because it's safe to us a two weeks transit, it's going to be more expensive. For what I see, today the price is the same. If I look the price that was in the history, I see that we are expensive in something like 20%. But I want to say something about 20%. If in, in, our, in our vision in TruckNet with the optimization, when we speak about the empty mile, Part of the thing is how to create a new match that truck can come back full. What we call in our platform, it's pick and roll. Pick and roll is something that's coming from basketball. When, 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 when the shooter wants to send the ball to someone with the back, and then he bring him back the ball, and then he put one, we call that pick and roll. Now, our pick and roll, that truck that's coming from Dubai to Port Haifa, leave a cargo, and then we take another cargo 
and we go back with the truck full, then the price go to something like 12 to 50% more. It's not 20, it's going down. It means that if we know to create a good, a good optimization, then the price go down. This is efficiency. And this is what truck they do. When, when I create this uh, uh, land bridge, one of the things that I think is how I can create optimization, digitation, and ETA road, and how it's work. When the ship is connected to the truck, and we can make ETA, and to come in the time to Port Haifa, and to match the ship that's coming from Europe, the cargo that need to come back, to Jabal Ali, then everything can work. For that, we create TruckNet system to create a visibility online. We create a ETA, a ECMR digital, POD, that everything is have to be digital with full ETA. And like that, we can create the optimization. And it's not only that. One of the things that we have in our platform is calculate the mission online. For every ride that we have created in our system, we create the calculate emission that know to match between the cargo to the emission to the right. And if you make a match, it means that we save emission when the truck going back full. And this is part of the situation. Thank you. Uh, Jay Davies asks, do you have military security on board for the transport? And Michael Jonks, Jonks uh, follows up, who will provide security to the trucks? What happens when shipping insurance rates return to normal? And what about the carbon footprint of these trucks? Okay. First, let's speak about the ship don't have anything for, for the military and security too. Okay. And we say it in the beginning. We are not militaries, uh, we are not army. We are service to the citizen. It means nothing that connect to the military and I don't uh, uh, move some uh, military uh, goods from A to B. We are work only about food, drink, sometimes electric, plastic. Uh, no one think, I, I hope that we don't need to think about this for the future. Because we are say that our discussion today is about sustainable and not about military. And, and today I don't have any uh, connection to military, not good, and not to put some military on the truck or something like that. Uh, and about the carbon, uh, yes, for sure, we know that uh, uh, the truck is uh, create a, a issue with the, uh, with the carbon. When we make the optimization and the, and the pick and roll, for sure we save emission. In the future, if it's gonna be with train, it's gonna be for sure with electric train, and then the carbon is gonna be a great. And let's say the truth, if we speak about carbon and ship, is, is not the same. The ship is, uh, the carbon in the ship is crazy. If I take even hundreds of thousands of trucks, it's not going to be like the ship because the ship is a is very bad situation with the carbon. And one of the things that we do and the ship don't do, we are walking uh, by the rules of scope three of the emission. It means that I know to match the, the carbon direct to the cargo. It means that this container pollute this carbon for that way. When you make it in ship, it's ship of thousands of container and it's not possible to, uh, to calculate that in a, in a way that the scope tree asks and we can do that. But for sure, I want to say the truck is, is better of the ship, but this is not the solution. The, the end solution, it's going to be electric train. Electric train, this is the solution if we think about the carbon and this is the vision and we hope so that uh, it's, it's going to be in the end a fast train 
And even if you look, you know, fast train can make this uh, road in, uh, in, in something like 40 hour, 48 hours. It's mean two day and from, from, from Dubai you can be in, uh, in, uh, in Port of Haifa. Well, hopefully we get there soon. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> All right. Well, we've come to yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we've come to the close of our podcast. Thank you again, Mr. Friedman, for joining us today. I want to tell you thank you, thank you of the time, and I'm sorry if my English not was so well, but thank you. You got your message across. Thank you. Thank uh, you. For Bye. For our viewers, please join us Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern for a webinar with Ashley Perry. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.